Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 11 where we look at a small selection of popular players and I help guide you through which ones I think are worth buying. There are some very good players that aren't in this selection and that's because they're just not popular enough at the moment. If you only ever choose popular players and you obviously choose the right popular players then you really should do all right, finish 5% globally and you'll do all right in your mini leagues. Hopefully that made sense. Right, let's have a look at how the players did in game week 10 and then we'll discuss what I think for the game week 11. So for the goalkeepers in the system, they didn't do very well at all. Flecken got four and that was it really. For the defenders, the more important defenders is Gvardiel seven, Robinson six. Next set of defenders, Burn six, Virgil van Dijk five. And then finally, Howard Bellis six. That was Southampton's first clean sheet of the season. So that was nice. If you had Howard Bellis, chances are he was just on your bench anyway, because he's just bench fodder. But it's nice for the bench fodder guys to get something sometimes. For the midfielders, Salah 9, Rogers 9. That's all for the important midfielders. The next set, Semenyo 10, Fernandes 10, Johnson 8, Sun 4. Finally, Gordon 6, and that's all for the midfielders. For the forwards, we had Solanke 16, Woods 7. Haaland still failed to score. That's I think he's got one goal in the last five league games. And then Isaac 9, Welbeck 5, Vardy 5. Vardy seems to be involved in more than half the goals for Leicester. So he's quite good. And also Leicester, I think, might be the only Premier League team now that have scored in every single game. So he's cheap, but it is Leicester. And they often only get one goal anyway. We're now going to look at what I think of the players for game week 11. And for each section, goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, forwards, they're ordered such that the first one I show you is the most important one. That doesn't mean you have to get them, and it doesn't mean they're the best player. It just means they're the most important. They're likely to hurt you the most if you don't own them. There's a little bit of colour coding on. The players that are green, I think, are good. So if you're bringing in players, go for green players. And if you've got the budget and the choice, you want to go for the first or the earliest green players that I show you. Hopefully that makes sense if you go along. So, for example, in the midfielders, the first green midfielder that you see would probably be the better one to get. You don't have to get that one, but it's probably the best one. Hopefully that made some sense. Anyway, so for the keepers, Ray is still the most important keeper. They've had a bad run, but Odegaard's been out injured for a while. The next game's away to Chelsea, so a reasonable chance of not getting a clean sheet there. Then there's an international break, and there's hope that after the international break, when they're home to Forest, Odegaard will be back. So it means Arsenal should be better again at attacking, and they'll also be better at defending. So if I was wildcarding, would I get Raya? If I had enough money, I probably would, but I wouldn't mess up the rest of the team to get Raya. Flecken, the end of the last game after 90 minutes, he was on 11 points. And then there's a bit of added on time and he let in two goals. He went from 11 points to four points. So it was funny if you didn't own him, but if you did own him, it wasn't so good. So Brentford do seem to let in goals most games, but he is only four and a half million. 1.1 cheaper than Raya. That 1.1 could help you elsewhere. We're introducing sales because now he's becoming really quite popular. But depending on your viewpoint, you could say two of the next three games are home to Newcastle and Ips, which they're good. Or you could be saying two of the next four include Arsenal away and Man City away. They're going to be difficult, probably not a clean sheet. But he is only 4.7. It's going to save you money on someone like Raya. And there are some 5 million keepers as well. So he's he's kind of all right. He is popular. He's probably still going to go up in value. But I think... I personally think he's not going to get quite as many clean sheets in the next handful of games as he's just got, but he's perfectly all right. Henderson, he'll have a few clean sheets, nothing special. Sanchez, 4.7. Home to Arsenal, so probably not a clean sheet there. What's happening this season, it seems, with goalkeepers and defenders, generally, they're not getting many points per million, and you're better off spending your money in the midfield. And then with what you've got left... Do what you can with the defenders and the goalkeeper. For the second pages of goalkeepers, Pickford losing popularity a bit. This game week he's away to West Ham. That's going to be interesting because West Ham and Everton at the moment are both quite poor. So it could be goalless. 
could be a 2-2 draw. Who knows? But he's 4.9. Compared to the other keepers, I think he's probably not worth 4.9. So I wouldn't be buying him. But if I had him, I'd be perfectly happy to have him. Martinez, I think at the moment, is not worth 5 million. But if you've got him, he's fine to keep. So Fabianski, he is bench fodder, but he has played the last couple of games. The West Ham defence, I think, is quite shocking. So I think Fabianski as a keeper is all right, but taking the rest of the West Ham as a team, they are going to let in goals. But home to Everton this game week, he may keep a clean sheet, but he's only 4 million. I brought him into my team because he just saves me money, and I think the keepers just aren't as important this year. Taking Ariola out because he's not even playing now, and even if he was at 4.4, West Ham are just too dodgy and not worth having. So he's out of the system now. And then Ward, he represents any 4 million keeper. Just bench fodder. And apart from Fabianski, they're just going to be sitting on your bench anyway. Gvardiol's now the most important defender, I'd say, in the system. He's 6.2 million, gets some attacking returns. I think Man City have only had two clean sheets out of 10 so far. But because he's becoming more and more highly owned, if you don't own him... When he does well, that is going to hurt your rank a bit. It's not worth taking hits to get him in. It's not worth massively reducing your midfield strength to get him in. But if you can get him, he's all right. Trent, I would expect between now and the end of the season, if they both stay fit for Trent to get more points than Gvardio, he's a nice attacking player. And Liverpool do keep clean sheets. So they're both good, but they're both quite expensive. But he is a good player. Eight Noyes... A new player in the system. He's now becoming really quite popular. He's only 4.7. So if you can't afford one of the other two and you have to make a defender by this week, then I'd say Aiton Noy is possibly the best one to get. They do have some nice fixtures coming up. Pedro Porro, nice fixture this week at home to Ipswich. Then away to Man City. So probably nothing there. Then at home to Fulham. He's still popular enough to be on this list, even though... Spurs are not keeping clean sheets. 5.5 is quite a lot to pay when you could get 8 Nori for 4.7 though. Gabriel 6.2. So Arsenal waited Chelsea, but after this game week and international break, Arsenal go on a nice run of fixtures. So you can expect from next game week, all the Arsenal players are going to be moving up the pages in how important they are. So I'd say if you don't have Gabriel, don't buy him. If you're wildcarding this week, and I suspect you're not, because next week would be a better week to do it. But if you do, you could possibly bring him in. But I think next week, people will be bringing in Gabriel that don't have him. Lewis, a bit dodgy for minutes, but he's only 4.9 million. I wouldn't be buying him now. I do have him. I'm not going to sell him at the moment. Robinson's only 4.7. He gets to play. I think he got an attacking return in the last game. He's all right for that price. The next set of defenders, we have Aynar at 4.7. He's here because he's growing in popularity. Two of the next three games may be clean sheets. The next eight games, he may get four clean sheets, maybe three. He's all right at 4.7. You should be able to afford him if you're moving things about and you wanted a defender that's all right. Virgil van Dijk, he's quite a good player. He's getting more popular now because the last two or three weeks he has been getting some points. 6.2 is quite a lot of money though. So there's, what's that, 1.5 million between Aina and Virgil van Dijk in price. Aina is going to hurt you more than Virgil van Dijk. They both get the same points. Virgil van Dijk between now and the end of the season will probably score more points though. Canate, I think he went off injured last game, but I think he's expected to be back again. So 5.3 million, that's a nice cheap way to get into the Liverpool defence. Saliba, I'm saying don't buy him. Because he's a weighted Chelsea. If you've not got him, don't buy him. And he's really not very popular. So he's not going to hurt your rank, even if he gets 15 points. But from next game week, people may start to bring him in again. Faust is just bench fodder. Burns nice and cheap, 4.4. But for 0.3 more, you can get Aina or maybe someone else. If you've got Burn, I'd say don't bother selling him. I probably wouldn't be buying him now unless he's all I could afford. And then Van der Ven is injured, at least for this game week. So don't go buying him, but he is quite cheap. He's just 4.6. Masraya for Man United from the Ipswich game in game week 12. They've got a new manager. And we don't know exactly which players will be playing where. It's likely Fernandes will play, presumably Onana will play. As for the rest, we may have to wait and see who gets played. So 4.5 million. 
they do have nice the nice three fixtures are nice for Man United and if he plays he's worth having but we don't know he's going to play we don't know he's going to play 90 minutes if you've got him he's absolutely fine to keep though Mikelenko's bench fodder 4.3 Conta don't buy him they're away to Liverpool this week if you've got him he's all right he's not expensive but don't expect anything this game week but absolutely not worth bringing in Howard Bellis 4.1 bench fodder Anderson bench fodder Van der Berg bench fodder Greaves is bench fodder but he's also injured so don't buy him and he's fine to sell if you want to free up a defender slot but you're not really going to be freeing up any money by selling him so Salas I think he's the highest scoring player currently in the system and he's the most important midfielder for sure at the moment he can score against any team if you can get to him he's worth having personally I don't think I would sell Haaland to get him this game week Possibly from next game week, you may want to shuffle things around. But he's a good player, definitely worth having. Palmer's a very good player, but he's currently got a knock and he's flagged. And the latest news I've seen is they're hoping he's all right for this weekend. So if you've not got Palmer, I'd suggest not getting him this game week because we don't know he's going to play. And even if he does, he's home to Arsenal and they're quite good defensively. But from next game week, assuming he's fit, lots of people will be buying Chelsea players. So he's definitely worth having. If you've got him, definitely keep him. But I don't think he's worth buying this week. And Bremo, 7.9 million. He does get quite a few points for that price. He's definitely worth having. Loads of managers have him. If you don't have him, all the time he gets points, it's really hurting you. He should be quite easy to get into your teams. Saka, he's a good player. He can score against anyone. Away to Chelsea this week. London Derby. I wouldn't be desperate to get him in this week, but from next game week, assuming he's fit, he's going to be very popular. Smith Rowe, nice and cheap, 5.7. Often doesn't get 90 minutes, but he often gets one or two chances for at least an assist most games. And then Rogers, he's away to Liverpool, so don't buy him. If you've not got him, don't buy him. If you've got him, he's absolutely fine to have. He's only 5.4 million. Johnson, good player. Three of the next four fixtures are very nice for Spurs absolutely fine to get if you want him McNeil's only 5.8 he is a very important player for Everton but Everton a little bit hit and miss at the moment three of the next four fixtures are nice for Everton though there's a reasonable chance he gets some attacking returns Luis Diaz he's a very good player I think he got a hat-trick last night if we knew he was always going to start and get 70-80 minutes he would be more popular I'd be saying he's a good player we don't know if he's going to start at the weekend don't know if he's going to start against Southampton. If he was ever nailed on like Salah getting 90 minutes most games, he would be very near the top of this list. He's just a minutes risk. So Semenya, I've made him a good player lang for his price. He's only 5.6 million. Bournemouth has some nice fixtures coming up and he's a nice way to save some money. So if you could go for Semenya or McNeil at the moment, I think I'd be going Semenya. Fernandez. So... Even with the new manager, we'd expect Fernandes to still be getting 90 minutes every game. He's averaged just over six points the last three games. The next three games are Leicester, Ipswich, Everton. Reasonable chance of getting some good scores there. He's not super popular at the moment, but if he scores against Leicester, his popularity is just going to be going up and up. But he's 8.2 million, but he's, I'm going to say he's a good player. Sun is also a good player. More expensive than Fernandes, 9.9 million. And he's not owned anywhere near as much as Fernandez. They're both lowly owned, though, to be fair. But Sun is a good player. So you've got a good choice here of midfielders that are green. Last page of midfielders. Garnacho is a good player, but we don't know where he's going to play under the new manager. If you've got him, fine, great. He might do very well this week. If you've not got him, I'd suggest you don't bring him in. Bowen is a good player but he's quite expensive 7.5 there's probably better way to spend those funds within midfield if you've got him don't sell him at home to Everton this week that's a very nice fixture Gordon another good player Newcastle seem to be finding their way now they've done better the last two or three games away to Forest and at home to West Ham then away to Palace some very nice games there and if he was higher owned you'd definitely want to get him to save your rank but he's very lowly owned at the moment so you don't have to rush to get him in, but he's a good player. Winks is bench fodder. Dibbling's bench fodder. Going to move Eze out of the system now. Hardly anyone owns him, and he's injured, so we can forget about him. 
for the forwards, I've not got Haaland as a green player because he's got one goal in the last five games, I think. He's probably going to go on a good run at some point. It might start this coming game week. It might be another few game weeks away. So if you've not got Haaland, I'd say don't bother getting him. If you've got him and you're not wildcarding, I'd say I'd be tempted to not sell him this week because from next game week, game week 12, Arsenal fixtures become good, Chelsea fixtures become good, Brighton fixtures become good. So if you're going to sell him, you want to do it next game week and shuffle some of your players around. But at the moment, we don't know which players we're going to want to get because there could be injuries in game week 11 or the international break. And equally, he may do very well against Brighton, in which case you're going to want to keep him. Wood, a lang for the price, is a good player. 6.5 million and he seems to be scoring in more games than not at the moment. So he's all right. Home game against Newcastle, away to Arsenal, then home game against Ipswich. He's definitely worth having. Solanke is also a good player and he's growing in popularity. Spurs have some nice fixtures coming up. Watkins, I'm saying don't buy him simply because they're a way to live for this game week. So if you've not got him at the moment, it's not worth spending £9 million on. But next game week, he may be one of the players you're considering to get if you do get rid of Haaland, if he does nothing this week. But £9 million, I think that's the second most expensive striker. Raul Jimenez, nice and cheap, 5.8 million. Jackson, 7.9. He's going to be quite popular, I suspect, from next game week. Not worth bringing in this week, though. Welbeck, so Brighton's fixtures get good from next game week. Don't bother buying him now. He's going away to Man City. Gel Pedro should be back soon, I think. So then we need to see what happens with the minutes. But he's only 5.9 million, which is OK. Isaac, as I said earlier, Newcastle seem to be getting a bit better. 8.3. If he continues to do well, he's going to, I think, shoot up in popularity. So again, some people that sell Haaland next game week will be buying Isaac. Vardy, only 5.7 million. He seems to be involved in more than half the Leicester goals, so he's all right. Havertz, very good player. And Arsenal are coming to the end of their bad run. So from next game week, I'd expect Havertz to become more popular and start doing better. But at the moment, I wouldn't be bringing him in. But if you've got him... Absolutely keep him because he's going to be good going forward. Calvert-Lewin, don't go buying him. He's just been shocking the last few game weeks. Manager's been transferring him out. So if he does well, he's not going to hurt you. And Cannon represents any four and a half million forward who's never going to play and just sit on your bench. We're now going to look at benching order and captaincy. This is just a suggestion. If you follow this blindly, I think you'll do all right. But if you disagree and want to do something else, that's fine as well. So for the keepers, the first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting is the keeper you put on your bench. So Ward shouldn't be playing. Martinez away to Liverpool. Then it'd be Fabianski at home to Everton. Then Pickford away to West Ham. So Pickford, I think, has got more chance of a clean sheet than Fabianski this week, even though he's away. But it's quite marginal. And then Sanchez, Henderson, Sells, Flecken and Raya. There's a reasonable chance, I think, that none of these are going to get a clean sheet this week. We're now going to look at the other players in the benching order. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, is position three in your bench. The next one, position two. And the last one, position one. So any four and a half million forward that's not even going to play, third on your bench. Then Greaves and Van de Ven, they're both injured. Then it'd be Dibbling, Faus, Konza, Harwood Bellist, Winks, Anderson, Mikalenko, Byrne, Masray. Aina, Van de Ven, Robinson, Vardy, Calvert-Lewin, Rogers, Welbeck, McNeil, Saliba, Canate, Lewis, Semenyo, Smithrow, Gordon, Raul, Gabriel, Bowen, Garnacho, Virgil van Dijk, Pedro Porro, Aignori, Trent, Cavardio, Havertz, Jackson, Lewis Diaz, Isaac, Watkins, Johnson, Wood, Saka, Palmer. Now, Palmer, if we knew he was fit, would be an all right captaincy shout this week. But we don't know he's fit, so he's not going to be one of the captaincy choices. But for the captains, I would suggest Salah is a pretty good choice this week. Is he going to be the most popular? I suspect that Haaland will still be the most popular. And they're both good choices. But of course, Haaland's not been doing so well recently. And he missed a penalty last night in Europe. Solanke is a good shout for this week as his son. Embremo's got a reasonable chance. And you know I like Fernandez. I think 
He's also a good shout. I think any of these are fine for captain, any are fine for vice captain. I would suggest if you happen to have Solanke and Son, you don't choose them both, just in case the game gets postponed randomly for weather or some other event. If you can't get two of these, then or you don't want to choose two of these, then I'd suggest any of the green forwards or midfielders at the previous pages, there'd be a fine choice. As for the background picture this week, we've got a cat, and whenever there's a delivery, there's all this packaging paper, the cat really likes making a little nest in the paper and curling up. But we don't seem to have enough packaging paper, and after a few days it goes all a bit rubbish. So I bought uh, 600 metres of packaging paper just so the cat can lie around in it and have a good time. And there we have it. That's my thoughts for the popular players for Game Week 11. Any player that you didn't see just now, they're not highly owned, so even if they do well this game week, they're not going to hurt your rank. And to finish in the top 5%, you just got to think, who's going to hurt me? Which ones do I need to get to protect my rank? <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.